So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the LPE Author Chat Series. Man, it's been a while since we've had one of these. So I am so excited. I am your host, Kimberly K. Labu, the CEO and founder of Labu Publishing Enterprise. And I am excited to be back with you all. This is the beginning of a special anthology segment for the authors of our upcoming anthology, The Mom and Me volume two. So we're going to be with you for this next week leading up to our launch on June 5th. We are super excited. And so you guys are going to get to meet some of our, uh, all of our contributing authors in this project. And our first guest for this project is author Lisa Stokes. So welcome to the LPE author chat series. Lisa, how are you? I am doing great. How are you this evening? Thank you I am doing me. amazing. Just Thanks. so excited to be talking about the mom and me too, because when I, um, when I gathered the, the moms for the first one, I had no, no, no idea there would be a volume two, <laughs> but then, wow. you know, other people had their stories to share and, you know, the first one was so successful. And so we thought, why not, right? There need to be more stories from moms out here that people can learn from, get encouragement from. Um, and so I'm just so excited that we were able to do this volume two. And I'm so excited that you said yes to this project. And so with that, I just want to ask you, why did you decide to be a part of the Mom and Me volume two? I decided after a gentle push from a sister of mine, and I say a gentle push because I have been offered this opportunity before and I did not take it. Um, it wasn't my season. It wasn't my turn. And sometimes I think we just have to stop and wait our turn in order to get the message that we want to get across when it's our turn. Yeah. So here I yeah, am. That's good. So here you are. It's your turn now, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that for such a time as this, your chapter, I really, really enjoyed reading. Um, and there was so much in it. And so we're going to share, we're not going to share all of it, but we're going to share okay. some of it with our viewing audience on tonight. And so I just want to open with um, an excerpt of your chapter that uh, starts off in the beginning when you said, my precious gift, Mariah, burst into this life weighing a whopping one pound at birth. I got to witness the masterful handiwork of God as he developed her tiny body right before my eyes. It was so personal, but excruciating to watch at times. I watched my daughter's little eyelashes come in. I watched parts of her body still transparent develop. Her skin was like the delicate pages of the Bible. You had to be extremely careful when you touched it. This sight, this scary but beautiful view was complex and daunting to experience from the eyes of a young mother. From my helpless vantage point as a mom, I prayed like never, like I never prayed before. At times, my words didn't make sense and were outright disrespectful. The conversational lines of my prayer language went from anger, helplessness, hopelessness, and disdain to one that has now evolved into a solid love relationship with the Lord. I needed to just have a conversation with God, a heart-to-heart, -heart, unfiltered talk with him where I could open up my heart and pour out to him. This was the toughest prayer moment, but the very one that changed my life forever. God proved to me what he alone was capable of doing for my daughter, Mariah, and me, and in me, without my feeble assistance. He said, whew, through it all, only God knew I was afraid of the unknown. I was unsure and unclear about what life was going to be like. The struggle was real, grappling with how I would parent this delicate life who was struggling to survive. Wow. That's powerful. So I want you to just take a moment. You know, I, I see you taking it in as I'm reading your own words back to you. Yes, um, yes. Share with us a little bit about this experience for you and what you wrote about here. The experience of having a premature child is unique in itself. It's a lot of uh, speed bumps. I, I call them speed bumps. Um, unexpected twists and turns, and you just don't know what the next moment is going to bring. So at that point, my prayer life became so strong 
because I had nowhere to turn but to God. And he walked with me. My daughter was given 72 hours to live. My wow. daughter's 24 years old now. So thank God. It, it, thank God, because there's many things that God has created on in this world that he has not set for us to figure out yet. So with that, I had to learn patience. I had no patience at all at that time of my life, no patience. And you had to really step out on faith. Um, I had to allow strangers to come and help me take care of my own child. Mm. And that's a piece that I didn't really go into because it, it kind of hurts you as a parent when you cannot do for your own child. Wow. And um, I'm here, you know, to encourage other parents who sit in my, you know, and walk that same path that where mm -hmm. I went, that the sun is going to come out. It's going to be brighter days. Wow. It's going to be some of those days that we would like to forget, but the glass is half empty or half full. It's going to be a positive or negative. So let's take the positive and let's just run with it. Yeah. Wow. What a powerful vantage point to look at that from. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. So there were like so many gripping phrases in your chapter. Um, and one of them for me was when you said, I mourned daily with a child still breathing. I was like, wow. Yes. And so I think you were talking about um, you know, thinking about the things that you were going to be missing out on because you didn't have a quote unquote normal, mm -hmm. your, your journey was not going to be normal. So talk about that a little bit, you know, that feeling of mourning daily, a child that was actually here. But different. mourning, when I said that it was definitely not on a negative piece, it, mm -hmm. it, I, I wasn't saying it yeah. in a negative tone, but as parents, when you get that news that you're going to be a mom, you're going to be a dad, mm -hmm. you immediately begin to create this image in your head. Mm -hmm. And when that image does not fit and does not come together, and it's so drastically different, mm -hmm. that's a death. That's a form of a death, death for you. And you mourn that. And as parents like myself, we've gone through mourning phases. And it was the, my child is different. Yeah. My child is not going to crawl. My child is not going to walk like the other children. And then we move to another phase of mourning where our child, children are not going to be educated the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my child is in a wheelchair, you know, and things yeah. of that nature. Uh, my daughter is legally blind. She requires round the clock mm -hmm. nursing. And then we get to, I'm going to say one of the, final morning phases when we finally realize and accept that my daughter is not going to go to Harvard. Yeah. She's not going to Yale. She is going to be with me for the duration of her life or my life. Yeah. So things are going to look so drastically different. And as a parent, I did do my just do to keep as much normalcy in our lives as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Mariah went to her eighth grade dinner dance she went nice. to her senior prom and did we do it yes did we have to do it a little differently absolutely mm -hmm. but I tried to give not just myself but her and my family those moments that we all yeah. look forward to you know so it's it's challenging but it's rewarding in the same because I could see God's riches mm. and it's not about money yeah. This is not about money. This is the, when I watched her eyelashes develop mm. and parts of her body that was still transparent. I said, wow, God is amazing all by himself. He doesn't need our help at all. And what a miracle. A miracle. Exactly. Yeah. She was a miracle. And she's taught me so many life lessons. She really has. Wow. Yeah. When you talked about watching her eyelashes, I was like, oh. like just the, the thought of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it just proves how miraculous God really is. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Wow. So, oh, this is so good. So good. So good. So let's see the next part. We go along your story. You talked about, um, you said this motherhood ride felt lonely. There were times when I was all alone in a crowded space. I was expending all of my love on my daughter with no one to love me in return. If you've never felt the embrace of unconditional love or never seen it in action, it's when you're able to love someone with the inability to say, I love you back or give you a hug back. Your love language and posture are unstoppable, but you can't be the beneficiary of the same in return. That's, That's powerful. Yes. That's powerful. And I still yeah, tear up wow. every time I think about that because Mariah can't hug me. She can't say, mommy, I love you. She can't say, mommy, happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. So the small... Um, triumphs that we have I accept them mm -hmm. and I thank God for them you know each yeah. day that she opens her eyes that's a gift you know mm -hmm. we live through a pandemic that could wow, have taken yeah. my daughter's life and this is what a lot of people um didn't really get when I had to really shut my house down because yeah. her immune system cannot handle that you know, and mm -hmm. I went from seven nurses to three nurses. Wow. And it was hard. And, but she still laughed. She still giggled. She still her own yeah. rendition of singing. And I take that because mm -hmm. God thought I was special enough to take care of one of his special babies. So I get up every day. Mm. I get up every day and I shake this thing loose every day. Wow. Nice. Nice. You said daily, I shouldered the responsibility of giving care to Mariah alone with a small intimate village of support. Whereas people would periodically offer spurts of support. I alone live the role of being the mother of a complex needs child who would require round the clock care, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and I like what you said about the spurts of support, um, because, you know, I know how or what it's like to have people who say, you know, they're going to support you, whatever, but then that kind of dwindles off. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, you had this small circle of support. And so how important was that to you though, to have at least that small circle of support? It kept me alive. And, yeah. that, and that, so that was, that was huge. It was huge yes. um, <laughs> because even with everyone who wanted to help. Um, as I say in some of my workshops, some people just don't know how to help you. Yes. They don't know. So don't be upset with them. Don't be angry. They just don't know how to help. When you yeah. have a child like this, everybody can't come and help because of the medical complexity. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't change feeding tubes and things of that nature, it's a lot of stuff that People want to help and their hearts are definitely in the right place. Yeah. Please don't misunderstand me. Their hearts are in the right place. Yeah. Um, but sometimes just that quick text message, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, how's it going? You know, you need anything. Days where I couldn't get out and go to the store. There yeah. were people in my village that went to the store for me and things of that. And, you know, my mother, God bless my mother, who took care of Mariah while I went to culinary school and when I went back to work. And yes. she would do everything but drop feeding too. She said, that's where I draw the line at. <laughs> you know, she's like, I can't do that. And I respected that. But mm -hmm. it's a, it's just different. It's doable, mm -hmm. it's just different. Yeah, and I, I like what you said too, because I think sometimes in situations such as this, um, like you said, people don't know how to support you. And so I think it's important that we do teach people how to support us through the difficult times in our life. So instead of getting upset with people because they're not doing X, Y, Z, you know, teach people how to support you. Like these are the things that you could do that would be helpful if you so choose. And yeah, so I exactly. think that's really, really important. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> so the next part of your story really resonated with me. Um, you said, Mariah's needs were so massive and required so much of my time that I forgot about or was too busy to wholeheartedly meet the needs of my newest daughter, Maya. Um, and so that really resonated with me because when I was eight, my mom gave birth to my brother who was a special needs child, who is still a special needs um, child. And um, just hearing you talk about this, uh, it really touched something in me because, um, you know, it was something that I could relate to. So I, I, want, you to, I want you to talk more about how, what that was like, because I know as a parent, you know, I watch my mom do it and try to struggle with that balance thing, you know, of, of, you know, trying to keep me happy and give me some sense of normalcy, but having my brother who has such massive needs. And so talk a little bit about the, trying to balance that. It, it, and it is that, it is a juggling game. And mm -hmm. my daughter did not ask to come into the situation. Yeah. So I had to make sure that she received my time also. Mm -hmm. So we would go and do mommy and me weekends. We may, you know, I'll save my money. We'll go to a hotel. We'll have pillow fights and paint fingernails nice. and eat popcorn because she deserved to have me just as much as her sister. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I knew, no, I didn't know. I did not know that all that I was doing was actually helping, I guess. Mm -hmm. When my daughter reached high school and she did her senior project, and it was about the forgotten child, the sibling of a wow. special needs child. And I sat there and she asked me, she said, well, are you going to be upset about this? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to want to know what research she did. And I went to her presentation and there wasn't a dry eye in there. I mean, she found resources for siblings. And but wow. what she said was, my mother never forgot about me. She Aww. made space for me. And that's wow. what we have to do as parents. It's, it's a lot. We carry a lot. And we carry a lot as Black women on our plates. Um, and not to discount anyone else, but there's we carry a lot. Sometimes we want to put down our capes. And we're just unable to do that from time to time. But I was happy when she said that because I said, okay, I gave her time. I gave her yeah. me and she felt that love. And, um, and we go from there. She's my, that's my ride, wow. my ride or die girl. <laughs> She's right there that with so me. That is so beautiful. Yeah, I, I, when you talked about, you know, her, her piece, The Forgotten Child, I thought, wow, what that must've felt like for you to yeah. listen to you know, her experience, you know, so and I just it, thought it was, that was so yeah, When she talked about missing birthday parties because her sister yeah. was sick at the last minute and mm. not going different places and stuff like that, it hurt as a parent because yeah. in a form, I was neglecting her. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had to figure it out and I heard to figure out how to balance and balance is not easy to find, no. but I did it and she and I have an excellent relationship. That's awesome. In, in your chapter, you had these quotes in here that I've marked that we talked about balance that I loved. You said, planned balanced moments produce meaningful memories for all. Yes. I thought, wow, that's it right there. Um, and then you said the intentional plans evolve into invisible imprints that leave lasting impressions indefinitely. Your chapter is just so full of like these nuggets that are just so powerful. I said, like, oh, I like that. So I'm like highlighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to help it's other so families good. because there's so many yeah. other families that I know who are struggling mm -hmm. through this. And yeah. If I can encourage them to get up and try one more time, mm -hmm. there'll be 364 days down the road saying I did I was going to give up. It can yeah. be done, but you have to find what works for you and what works for your family. This is not a one size fit all. Yeah. It is just yeah. it's just not. Right. 
Man, so like fast forward more in your chapter, because I was like, all of a sudden I got to this. <laughs> where you talked about having a stroke at 50 years old changed your life. You said there were detour signs that were posted, flashing lights were beaming, but you missed them all, um, hence leading to a stroke in November 2019. You said the Lord had been giving me warning signs that my body was tired, but in my mind, I was hyped up, um, bunny who kept on trying to keep hopping along busily. So man, so talk a little bit, you know, they'll have to read more in, in your chapter for that, but just talk a little bit about that. Cause I can see how like everything that you were doing probably, you know, landed you there. Yes. It all snowballed. It all snowballed and it snowballed quickly. Like you read, wow. um, there were signs there, but this organization needs this church needs that family needs this. And you're like, okay, I'll do this one more thing. And you just kept going and kept going until he said, okay, you are still not going to listen. And he stopped. Mm. And wow. to have a bleed in your brain in an area that is inoperable. Mm. Inoperable. A neurosurgeon walked in. I know exactly what he does. And I said, yeah. not today. God was standing right there with me. And he said, are you listening now? And I said, yes. Wow. And I stopped immediately, immediately. To have to call my daughter at college to tell her that I had a stroke mm. was heartbreaking. Because now she's worrying about what's going on at home versus her mm. study. So I had to get it together and they yeah. did not deserve for their mother to leave out of here for things that can be controlled. Mm -hmm. So no wow. is a complete sentence. Yeah. And I don't explain. I love it. And I just wow. go, <laughs> it, is, it is, we have to slow down. We do have to slow down yeah. because some people, um, because I knew what was happening to my body. I was able mm -hmm. to get to the hospital in enough time. Mm. Some people don't are not afforded that opportunity yeah. to know and to get there. So with that blessing, you do better. You know better, yeah. you do better. Yeah. And that's yeah. or I either do. we do we do feel what's going on and we make excuses for it and right. just keep keep going. <laughs> and keep, keep going. And then you get to a space where it's irreversible. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't want to take that chance. I went and I stopped. I mean, it was like cold turkey and wow. I just stopped doing a lot of stuff because I equate doing things to all rise and that's when they're ushering my family in and I'm already laid out in front of the church. Mm. So if it's not worth that, I'm not going wow. to do. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's powerful. My goodness. Yeah, I've read that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wake up call yeah a big wow. wake up call mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes yeah so gosh our time is is winding down fast so talk a little bit about what it was like for you to write your chapter for this book um it was mentally exhausting it was draining wow. it was things that I had to unpack that I had not touched in 24 mm. years um, yeah. that I had kind of buried. Um, and we do that when it's things that are traumatic. To us. Yeah. And it took some starting and stopping just that simple. And, and I remember when I said, I'm coming, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm coming. <laughs> but it was those days where yeah. you would get angry when you start really, when you have to put this down on paper, it's like, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? You know, because the person that sits here today is not the person that was there 24 years ago. Just, wow. just not. Um, mm -hmm. And it was therapy. Wow. Yeah. It was therapy. It really was because I was able to forgive myself for some things. Mm. Um, Praise God. Because when you don't know, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And you learn as you're going and you do better. Yeah. And that's all I can say. I was intentional about just doing better. That's my word yeah. for 2021, intentional. Do better. Intention. <laughs> yes. I love it. 
<laughs> wow, that's powerful. I always, always say every time there is healing through writing. Yes. And people just don't realize how, you know, powerful of an experience it is. Yes. And so every time I hear my authors talk about that, it just does my heart so much good because it's like, wow, how powerful is that? Yes. You know, that this experience created that space. That space so in that release. Grateful. Yes. In that release. Because when you're able yes. to forgive yourself for things mm -hmm. that you didn't intentionally put in your yes. path, but because of your decision making, mm -hmm. it may not have, you know, gone the way that you wanted it to go, but I had to forgive myself and, mm -hmm. and move on. You know, you can't yeah. keep carrying that baggage. Nope. It'll weigh you down. Yeah, it will weigh you it down. It will weigh you down. Yes. Wow. Ah, I love that. So what advice would you give to other people out there that are contemplating or thinking about writing their stories? What advice would you give? One piece of advice you would give? Start. <laughs> That's good. Start. Just yeah. start. Um, I use a program dragon because if I start mm -hmm. writing, I kind of go all off the gamut. So I put my headset on and whatever lays on my heart, I just start talking about. Ah, okay. And I and I and I just talk about you know um, whatever the subject may be for that day. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've recorded three or four times a day because things run across my mind, and I want I want to capture it. I don't want to forget mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. I will just record it. But you have to start somewhere, even if yeah. you get a little journal, and you just start writing. You'll mm -hmm. be surprised how far you get, and you'll be you like, know, I wrote all of this. You did. Yeah. You did. Absolutely. You did. There's more than one way to do this thing. It, it is. It is. As they <laughs> oh, say, it's two. And that's more one than of the best way to skin ways. a cat. So let's exactly. go. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. I love that. So tell people where they can order a copy of the book from you because you can still pre order it right now um, while we're doing these interviews. Tell people how they can get the book from you. Yes, you can go to my website at kdelisa, K D E L I S A dot com. It'll open up. It gives you three opportunities to purchase the book. You can read my bio and things of that nature. And some of you are going to get some gifts too. Some, some great gifts in your packages <laughs> when you get your books. You know, yeah. so um, yeah, kdelisa.com. Awesome, awesome. This has been so good. I mean, so full. And um, and I hope that our viewers, I know they did, you know, got a lot out of this interview. Um, I'm so happy that you said yes to this project. So I'm so happy to have your contribution in this book um, because it certainly makes the project much richer. And I know that your story is going to be impactful to many because it really touched my heart in a special way. And so I just thank you for your yes. I thank you for being our special guest to kick off our special anthology series for the mom in me volume two leading up to our launch to our viewing audience our launch is going to be on june the 5th we kick it off at 2 p.m and you guys know how i like to party and so look forward to those <laughs> gifts we're going to be doing giveaways and just um having a great time so be sure to join us for that um so lisa thank you for coming on this evening you're welcome and, um yeah, I just, I just look forward to people reading your chapter and giving you that feedback um, so they, you know, as they get to experience what I've experienced in reading your chapter and all the other chapters in the book. Um, so thank you so much. And to our thank viewing you. audience, thank you so much for joining us this evening for another segment of the LPE Author Chat Series. This is Kimberly K. Laboo. Remember, if you're thinking about writing your book, head on over to www.laboopublishing.com. So stay tuned and be sure to join us for the rest of our interviews on this week. We love you guys. Take care and be blessed. Good night. Bye.